almost everybody in the United States that you see today in the, the whiskey world that says that they're doing any kind of slow water reduction or using French techniques, they have studied with me and they've, they've taken classes with me. So I'm, I'm pr probably one of two or three people in the United States who have spread this knowledge. Who the hell am I in <laughs> Wellman? That is the question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, my name is Nancy Fraley. I'm the master blender at uh, Still Austin Distillery in Austin, Texas. But we're not in Austin, Texas. Where are we? We are not in Austin, Texas, are we? No, we are in Berkeley, California, where a lot of the Still Austin blending commences. And this is where I live. And um, our head distiller, uh, John Trappell, sends uh, barrel samples to me here in California. This is where I, I do uh, the blending most of the time. So a master blender is at least in the traditional sense, is someone that has apprenticed with a with another master blender um, over the course of at least um, uh, eight, nine plus, you know, ten, ten years. It is someone that is in charge of all of the um, the maturation of the whiskey and of the blending of the whiskey. The uh, moment that the spirit comes out of the still and goes into a barrel at that point, the master blender um, takes charge and that, that's what we call elevage. Elevage meaning to raise, um, you know, raise a spirit just like you would a child. I started off in this industry uh, working at a um, brandy distillery, actually, uh, called J Germain Robin. It was in um, Ukiah, California. It was started by a 10th generation cognac maker that came to California in uh, 1982. That's, that's where I, I got my initial training once learning these centuries old French brandy techniques. In the, the years after my time at that distillery, gone um, to go study with other master blenders in the um, uh, the, the Cognac region and our Armagnac region and in Southwest France and and such. Actually, I've, I've studied with master blenders all over the world. What I bring to the the bourbon world is uh, a very different approach than than what's traditionally been been done in that world. I always re refer to it as uh, making um, uh, bourbon the French way <laughs> with French se sensibilities and you know with with old very sophisticated um, uh, techniques you know, that have been around for centuries the very few people in the, the United States unless they've studied in the uh, cognac to tradition even know about. So the technique of slow water reduction, which is still Austin we are known for, <laughs> um, it is a, a technique that again comes from the um, uh, you know, ancient um, artisanal uh, French cognac tr tradition and uh, French brandy in general. Um, and the the methodology initially stems from the fact that if you take a very fatty spirit and add water to it very quickly, it's going to saponify. Well, what, it, what does that mean? It's going to turn to soap. So if you look at um, uh, um, the, yeah, the, these old cognac traditions and traditions in France, the, the uh, whole art of slow water reduction was intended to be used to prevent saponification. So that's, you know, where um, if, if you add water too, too fast to a very fatty spirit, um, the, the, um, the alcohol molecules, water molecules don't have a chance to bond properly. So it essentially turns to soap. So, so that, that's the theory, the, the original theory, but behind soap water reduction. However, it has a number of benefits. What it also does, um, it also, if, if you add water to the barrel slowly over time, you're able to, um, uh, to, to draw the, the water-soluble elements out, out, of, 
out of the oak. So what, what does that mean? We're able to get a lot of um, those caramelized wood sugars out of there. So if, if you taste the, the whiskey and you know you, you get a lot of, um, you know, you see on the sides, you've got a lot of uh, wood sugars and you know the, and just a, a lot of sweetness and um, the viscosity, that's, that's where that's coming from. So, so that's, that's, that's one thing it adds. It also allows, again, for the uh, the alcohol molecules, the water molecules, and the, the fatty acids, gives them time to bond properly. And so, so what you're getting is a much more sophisticated spirit uh, in the end. And I, I would argue that that's why um, it, it's still lost and why the musician and why the artist are very soft on the palate, very round. Uh, very, very well integrated. Um, it it also kind of helps them. Uh, what I would say, kind of overcome the Texas funk. <laughs> helps uh, you know um, uh, everything to to not feel aggressive. And so it uh, the so slow water reduction has so many benefits. Uh, you know, it's not just one thing. I mean, it it is grounded in a historical reason for doing it, but 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 it, it has so many side benefits to, you know, the caramelized wood sugars is pulling out to creating more softness on the palate, more rounded qualities, more integration, um, you know, more of a sophisticated spirit that I, it's, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's our secret sauce. So over the course of my career, I've worked with people all, all over the world, the distilleries from Haiti, Belize, Australia, India, Israel, uh, Canada, Mexico, you name it, as well as the United States. 11 years ago, I had, I, I was teaching a course in, um, in Washington State and I had these people come, these crazy people come from Texas. And we got to know, we had many meals together, shared, shared mer many a, a beer and <laughs> spirit together. And there was something about the vision from these crazy Texans. <laughs> Being a Tennessean, I can, you know, I, I appreciate crazy Texans. Um, I felt very authentic, that the, they were very authentic and very real. And I really, um, their vision really spoke to me on a, um, not not just on a business level, and uh, but a, a spiritually, no pun, pun intended there. Um, I, 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 what they wanted to be able to to do was to create a bourbon that, that really spoke to people. Uh, you know, really, first and foremost, spoke to people in, in their, their region and in, in, in the, the Austin area. They, they wanted to be local, first and foremost. But they wanted to go beyond that. And to create something that was uniquely Texas, uh, Texan. Um, and, you know, while I've worked with um, distilleries that use local grains and such. There was just something about the culture and the authenticity and the um, desire to do everything in house, everything in house, um, that it, it, it really spoke to me personally. And um, and you know, being a native Tennessean, uh, you know, my my state has a um, a deep connection to the state of Texas. <laughs> I felt a lot of um, affinity, a, a lot of personal connection, um, and um, I just I fell in love. Um, I believed in the the vision and the dedication to quality. Um, is is not something I always find. Um, you know, wanting to really do things the right way, wanting to and to have patience, and um, you know, while putting a, a two-year-old um, 
whiskey on the market, not just any two-year-old whiskey, something that, you know, at the base, at a minimum, you know, it, it's a starting point at, at two, two years old. That that was just absolutely exceptional. And um, and I'm I'm in love with the the, the vision of looking. Um, you know, uh, we, we talk about looking a hundred years into the future, and I'm very much on board on board with that because you know, coming from the cognac tradition, you know, we we looked at ourselves more of as stewards. Um, you know, j just there for a small portion of, um, you know, the, the life of a cognac, you know, that's, you know, for spirits that are hundreds of years old, you're just, you know, a part of a small part of it. But if, if you can have a, uh, you know, a, a role to play in that, um, you know, that, that's just, you know, that, that's a life dream. And so the, the fact it's so lost, you know, that we talk about looking, you know, 50, 100 years into the future and into what we can create. And, you know, we're not just thinking about two years from now or five or, or 10 or even 20. You know, we're, we're really envisioning what we can do in the, the, the long term. And that's the kind of thing I want to be part of. I, I, I want to be part of a team of people that think of themselves as stewards of this, or of this whiskey. And, um, you know, you know, our, our, um, you know, mine and, you know, John Trapel and, you know, our um, stories will be written, weaved in, into the, or woven into the um, fabric of this, the spirit, but, but there are going to be people beyond us, too, and that, that, is what matters for me. And that that's really a, a big part of what made this so exciting. And, you know, just the authenticity, wanting to, to um, you know, for to, to get people locally excited about the spirit and to create something really unique. You know, the, to, to, to have the patience and the discipline to, to be able to create that. That's, that's quite a thing, I think, and it's very exciting, it's damned exciting. <laughs>